radio station is like an iceberg. You only see the little bit of it. You only see what you, what you hear on the air or what you see when the van goes by or when somebody's passing out T-shirts or bumper stickers at a promotion. Radio station is a business. There's lots of jobs at radio stations. They may not all be being a star or being a personality. They may not all be being a news person or being a music director or some you know, glamorous job like that where you get paid 200 bucks a week and all the free CDs you can take home. There are some actual jobs behind the scenes that are very important. And some of those jobs are easier to get than the programming jobs. And some of those jobs are jobs that will last a long time. Station. If you don't get anything out of the session today, and I hope you get more, uh, but if you don't, if you have a job as a traffic director at a radio station, you are employed for the rest of your life. Trust me. Uh, if you can get into some of the uh, companies around here that sell radio traffic commercial scheduling software and learn how it works, and then go on the websites for the jobs for either the NAB or any of the state broadcast associations, traffic director is a crucial job. And it's like one of those jobs that you have forever because once you get in there, they don't want to change you. And then you can make everything so that you're the only one who knows how to fix it. And then, like the chief engineer does, he wires everything so only he knows how to make it work. I have spent most of my career in programming, but programming is part of the connect between the different departments. You can't work one without the other. I mean, the DJs can't go on the air unless the transmitter is turned on and working correctly, and the computer's working, and the music is in there. And he doesn't know what to do unless he has a guidepost that's been established by the traffic manager. And he's not going to get paid unless the accountant knows where the check stocks are and how to sign the checks and who's supposed to get what. But I've spent most of my career in, in programming side, and that's because uh, that's where I grew up. You all have your favorite radio stations. It is said by the ratings companies that everybody can usually remember about three, three and a half radio stations in their city. If I stopped you on the street and I said, can you name your favorite radio station? You probably could. And then if I said, what's your next favorite? You probably could. And if I said, what's the one after that? You maybe could. And if I said, what's the one after that? You might say, uh... And then the one after that is, I didn't know there were any more. Because we all have our own specific interests. We all like the music we like. We like the, the DJ we like. We listen at the time of day that we listen, whatever. Someday do this, just for giggles. Go to a radio, sit in a room, and put the radio on AM. I presume most people are FM music listeners primarily, but many people still listen to a lot of AM stations. There's a lot of good ones out there, and AM stations do well in a lot of markets. But put your radio on AM and tune it all the way down to the left side, down by 56. That's where the AM starts, at 560. And, this, and just slowly turn the knob or push the button and tune it up. And stop every few seconds when you hear a station. And you'll say, I didn't know this station existed. I didn't know this station. I didn't do that and go all the way to the top of the AM band and listen to how many radio stations are on the air on AM. And then you're at the top of the band, flip it over to FM. And do the same thing starting at FM 108 at the top end of their frequency and go down. And you'll hear jazz station, you'll hear R&B station, you'll hear urban, you'll hear oldies, you'll hear country, you'll hear another country, you'll hear somebody doing something else, you'll hear gospel, you'll hear this, that, and the other. And you'll say, I didn't know all of these stations were there. It's really below the radar screen how big the radio industry is because we only concentrate on the part of it that we like and that we know. Looking for a job in radio is not always standing around the outside of your favorite radio station, hoping and wishing that you could get in there. It may be going down to the other side of town and knocking on the door that might fall down if you knocked on it too hard. And the owner is there and he'll say, sure, I'd love you to be my morning disc jockey. Here's a broom. If this takes commitment. I am up here after a gazillion years of working in radio. I couldn't think of doing anything else. I mean, you know if you play in a band you've got somebody who's taken two or three lessons and then somebody who's picked a guitar up when they were two years old. There's a difference in this. If you just want to try radio because you think it might be fun or it might be glamorous, just, you know, go come back next week to the plumber's convention. They'll have a career fair. It's, it's something that you've got to love. You just really have to like this. It, it's going to be something that, that will be very rewarding and very fulfilling and very frustrating because there's going to be so much of you that you're going to put in it. 
as I said a while ago, it's clean, it's inside, there's no heavy lifting, there are a few ego benefits. Yes, I am the person on the radio. Thank you very much. Yes, I am. That was my voice on that commercial. I played the guy who said, huh? Yes, it is a glamorous job to some people, but the work of being on the air at a radio station, the excellence, it becomes just like being you know, a major league pitcher. It's just like being you know, a home run hitter. It is the execution of basics repetitively over and over and over and over again. Remember that story in, in legendary times about the Trojan horse? We had the, you know, the Greeks and the Trojans were having this big war and they had this fortress and the Trojans left this giant wooden horse outside the gates and the guard said, oh, nice horse. Must be a gift. Let's bring it inside. Bring the horse inside the gates. And the horse is full of soldiers who get out and annihilate everybody. That's the way I like to look at radio. You get on the inside, however it takes. And then from the inside, you figure out what else you can do, who you can network with, who can help you when you get on the inside to move to the next level. Here's what you do. When you send your resume to anyone, you have to make sure that they got it. I prefer spending that extra 65 cents and getting delivery confirmation so you have a record of it. So when you do a follow-up letter, you can say, according to my records, my resume got to your offices on December the 3rd on such and such a time. Uh, it's been several weeks now. I'd like to follow up with you. So you, have your, you know that they got it. Somebody signed for it. It was delivered. Uh, a couple of other quick secrets here is I always try to send my material to somebody or tell people they should put it in a nice, bright colored envelope. If you're going to mail a resume to somebody, uh, put it in a red envelope or put it in a yellow envelope. Or if you're going to put it in a regular manila envelope to mail it, your folder and your resume maybe should be inside of a presentation folder, a pocket folder inside that has a color to it. Because when you call up a couple of weeks later and say, I believe you got my resume, it's the one in the red envelope. The guy will look over at the stack of resumes, and yours will be the red one, or the green one, or the blue one. You know, it's a little thing like that that can be very subtle, but can help set you apart from the crowd. Everybody uses New Times Roman or Arial, one of those fonts on their resume printing. I'm going to give you the name of my favorite font. You all have it. It comes with every word processing program. It's called Garamond. G-A-R-A-M-O-N-D. It's always there. It looks a little like this and a little like that. It spaces very, very well. But it looks different. If, there's, if a guy's got, whoever, an HR person has 50 resumes, Arial, 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 New Times Roman, Arial, Arial. Oh, that one looks a little different. Just slightly different. It's, it's just almost imperceptibly different. But just something as subtle as a slightly different font sets you just a little bit apart from all the other resumes that somebody is looking at that, between getting the delivery confirmation, putting things in a colored envelope or a highly identifiable envelope. I suggest you don't put glitter in the envelope or that's been done before. It doesn't work really well. Uh, and, uh, and then if you are going to uh, send your resume, I think it's a good idea to either send a short letter or an email or even a fax to say, I would like to send a copy of my resume to your attention. It will arrive in a few days. It will be in a red envelope. Here's, here's three things you've got to learn. One is you've got to tell people what you're going to do. You've got to tell people what you're doing. And you've got to tell people what you did. 